And so yeah, I just think even if we're like talking, it just feels a little bit more natural to be like, hey, you know, what about this? And so we're having more of a conversation than like than less of a lecture. So yeah. So we'll give this a shot today and see how it works. Have some fun. So yeah, my name is Tom. Um, so we've had me as a substitute to put for uh, filming for Josh today, so he wasn't feeling too well. So. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll see, yeah, we're more than happy to come in help out. So um, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going over um, our natural world on page 27 of our book. And so some of our object objectives for today is we're going to be using our new vocabulary words to describe the natural world. Understand um, and use both will and be going to appropriately in the future tense. And then also understand and use the present progressive and simple present to express the future tense. So um, when I became a teacher here, I had to start thinking about like everything I learned as a kid. Like, because when you learn your own natural language, like your own native language, you don't think about like progressive, like future time, past time, like it all just like it makes sense. Um, and so one of the most like difficult things I found, like we kind of when I came back to teaching here was like relearning the English language was how it just doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> um, why you need to be talking about like in the future, why when like we're talking in a conversation, why do I need to talk about what's happening in the future like I'd be talking about what's happening in the past? And also like could and would and should like None of those make sense. <laughs> like, I should have done this, and this could have happened, and this could have happened, but none of it did, like, at all. So, <laughs> um, so when we get to that point, like, we'll, we'll slow down and we'll make sure that we have, like, that we all understand what's going on. Um, I don't want to make anybody feel like they're left behind. <laughs> so, it's very difficult and very, very confusing, but I think after a couple examples, we'll all kind of grasp onto it. Understand that talking in the future is also talking about that. Yes. Yeah, we'll get to that point. We'll there. So, yeah, we're on page number 27 now. Um, unit 2, Our Natural World. Um, and so, just the goals of this unit. Uh, by the end, we'll be able to describe a natural setting, show concern for endangered animals, and discuss the pros and cons of development. So, uh, we came up in last class, but does everybody know what pros and cons mean? So, pros, so what do you think it means? So if we're going to discuss the pros and cons of something, what do you think that means? Pros and cons. Yeah, the pros and cons. So if I say I'm pro, if I'm pro free parking in the back, what does that mean? Well, see, like, um, like pro free parking, it also means like if I'm, if I'm for free parking in the back, it also means like I'm pro free parking in the back. So it means I'm I'm for it. You argue. I would argue with it. And, you know, like I want free parking in the back. Like mm -hmm. we like we should have a free parking lot in the back. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm pro free parking. Yeah. Um, and con would be like like I'm against free uh, parking. I'm critical. Yeah, yeah, I'm critical about it. So like I I'm against it. Like no no free parking. Everybody has to pay. No, I'm like, no, I'm pro free parking. So pro is like things that you're for, and then cons are against. Uh, so yeah, cons against, and mm -hmm. uh, pros with. Yeah. So it's just a, a way of comparing something. So um, even like when you're uh, you're picking so, so it's, uh, the, the pros, it's, it's like this, or it's uh, short from long uh, word? It's, it's a Latin root word. So like pro, um, so you would hear like a progressive, uh, or uh, Proactive, so it just means like you're for like uh, proactive okay. means like you're short. Yeah, it's, it's just short. like a shorter Latin root. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then cons is like against. So you use it for um, like if somebody is conducive to a classroom, he's like they're being against what the classroom is doing or conducive to the situation. So like if all your friends are like we're having a good time, and then you have that one friend that's like I hate it here, and you're like come on man. Like, we're all having a good time. You're being really conducive to the environment. So it means they're just kind of going against what we can We can use it to deflate. With what? Like, uh, yeah. Pro and someone's like, like, he's 
Botswana and this area I'm pro Botswana. Yeah, I think uh, the media use it uh, for president or something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So they use the pro and con a lot. So you'll see people that are like, like I'm pro Obama, or I'm, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You won't hear a lot of people say like I'm con something, like I'm against this. So it's either like pro, pro whatever. Um, it seems to be more of a popular um, Latin word to just put on anything. And we'll talk about this later too. Um, but uh, yeah, but you won't hear a lot of people that will say like con, like I'm con. So to say I'm against this. So it's not that it's like the wrong way to say it, it's just it's more of a like a formal, it's kind of more of an informal, like you don't say con, that's like a con con parking spaces. You know? Like I'm against parking. Uh, but like pro parking, it just it rolls off the top one. Uh, it's right. just a noun. Yeah. Okay, this no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then aren't you? Yeah. Um, underneath our goals, we've got a big map of Nicaragua here. Mm. I look at that. Or Costa Rica, I'm sorry. Um, Nicaragua is right above it. And so we've got um, the waterfall of La, La Fortuna. And so over on the left, it's got like the bigger picture. And the Areno Volcano is right on the other side of that. And so has anybody ever been to Costa Rica? No, okay. Yeah, I haven't either. So. <laughs> I hear it's beautiful by the description in the book. So <laughs> it's, it's that guy who's like, it's like Costa Rica is beautiful at this time of year. Like, <laughs> um, so uh, we've got our vocabulary words below it. But I want to take a minute and kind of look at the map. And so in the lower left hand corner, we've got the legend. And so it's, it lists off our mountain ranges on one, two, and three. Um, and you can see the three mountain ranges that kind of run diagonally through the middle of Costa Rica there. So we've got the Guanta Coste range up on the top left, um, right next to Liberia. Liber Libria. Lib Liberia. 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 No, it's not Liberia. I guess it is. And then number two. Name city. Yeah, it's the name of the city right there, right next to the mountains. And then number two, the right across or right next to San Jose, right in the middle, is the central volcanic range. And then three down in the bottom towards Panama, we've got the Talamaca range. Talamaca. Yes, at the same time. <laughs> so, but it's really good practice because uh, English and Spanish are both language based languages. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 fun to catch on. Um, but yeah, and then on the other side, it lists our national parks as well, or their national parks as well. And you can see, like number four looks to be about the biggest in there, La Amistad. And then we've got the Pacific and Caribbean Sea right next to each other. Um, and so. Let's go ahead and move down to part A, vocabulary. Um, Gold. Uh, go, yeah, we'll go ahead and sing, say it now. So like, um, I have the, the tape too, if you guys want to listen to that, or we could just repeat it out loud. Okay. Let's just repeat it out loud. Do you want me to do the voice like that's on there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> vocabulary. <laughs> Geographical features. Read and listen, then listen again and repeat. A golf. A golf. A, golf. A, golf. A, sea. A sea. A sea. A bay. A bay. A volcano. A volcano. A lake. A lake. A mountain range. A mountain range. An ocean. An ocean. A, ocean. A national park. A national park. I forgot to pause in between like each one. Like <laughs> a lake. A lake. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> a mountain range. <laughs> like a mountain of evolution. <laughs> like, <laughs> hang off in between. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So that's our vocabulary word. So, okay. So, a golf. What would be a golf? I don't mean golf. Oh. 
section on the big end of the pool, like the water's always going to be more displaced and like kind of more rocky and calm, or rocky and like all over the place. But like if you have a bay, so it's going to be closer to land, it, the water's going to be a lot calmer, a lot smoother, because there's going to be a lot of land underneath of it. So there's going to be less water for you to pull your boat into and everything else. 
So like the ocean is where it's really deep and like the water is real crazy and you've got you know jet currents taking it this way and that way and everywhere else. But when it starts, the land starts to push up on it, that water gets a lot calmer, gets a lot more navigable to where you can actually pull your boat up and then slowly kind of undo it right there where you have your, your bay. And then you can have your guy up here yeah. fishing. <laughs> so the bay is the area closer to like the mainland where like boats and stuff will go in. So typically, like on your map, it shows where um, it's got a lot of um, like little islands, and so it's, it's more conducive to pulling a boat into there. Versus like the ocean or the ocean, or where there might just be a huge drop off, where that water like. Have you ever seen like videos of like in uh, like Australia where the water is just like crashing against the side of the, like the walls, rock walls, and stuff like that? So that's probably where the ocean just or the land just goes straight down. So a bay is more calm waters for ships and stuff to pull into. So that's the biggest difference between them. Yeah. So yeah, you're more likely to go spend time in like a bay, yeah. like going fishing and swimming and things like that. So, a volcano though. What's a volcano? The lava. The hot lava, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the rocks and everything else. So it's like where, if you guys, um, you guys know about the tectonic plates, yeah. or like how the Earth is, you know, a bunch of plates all moving together. So it's where those two plates kind of rub up, and then they form like a little. It's like a zit for the Earth, and so that volcano just pops up. And it's got all the liquid hot, like magma, and like molten earth, and iron, and everything else. It's just really hot. And so every once in a while, you'll get a, a pressure buildup, and then that's where it like just shoots up. You get the fires and the smoke and everything else in the sky. And then when it cools down, that's all new earth for everything formed. So 